Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I'm switching it up just a little bit and taking a break from some Halloween DIYs and bringing you five new fall DIYs. Now, if you love Halloween, don't worry. I have a lot more spooky content coming. So, so you don't miss it. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little notification bell so you can get notified anytime I upload a new video. Then hit the drop down menu and click all so you can get notified about all notifications. All right, so let's get started with these five new fall DIYs. So for my first DIY, I'm gonna be starting off with this sign that I actually got from Target Dollar Spot in the summer. And as you can see, there's a different kind of inserts that you can put in there so you can kind of change them around so I just chose one that I didn't think I was ever going to use and I'm just going to give that a coat of white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to make sure that it is completely covered I might have even given this two coats to make sure that the you couldn't see the words from underneath my cousin had asked me to help her decorate her fall mantle and she wanted to pop in a little bit of the, that moss color. So I, I told her I would make some DIYs to go in her home. So this one is definitely one that I gave her and she really loved it. And this one is so easy to make. So after my sign dried, I took my ruler and I just made a pencil line on the top and the bottom. And I'm just using the width of the ruler to act as shiplap or faux shiplap. So I am just drawing my lines and then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna smudge my lines with my finger. If you've been following me for a while, you've heard me say multiple times that this is my favorite way to do it. And I just think that that really gives off that faux shiplap look. Next, to make it look a little bit more rustic, I'm gonna take my chunky brush and I'm going to dry brush some of my Waverly Antique Wax over my board to kind of make it look like that chipped wood look. I love doing this distressing method and I, because I just, you know, I just love that rustic look. Now, if you don't like the rustic look, you can absolutely skip that step. Then I'm going to go ahead and sand over it. That way it blends it all in. Next, I'm going to take some Mod Podge and I'm going to coat the top of my board with that. And then I'm going to take this super cute window cling that I got on a sheet of window clings from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to simply push it on top. Then I'm going to take Mod Podge and just brush over it. That way the window cling is completely sealed and it's as if it is one piece. Then I, all I had to do was slip it back into the frame and that's it. I have this really cute stand up sign. What do you think? This next DIY is also super simple. I picked up a bunch of these little faux cutting board signs from the Dollar Tree in the spring because I knew that I could use them for virtually every season. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna use my little scraper tool or you can use whatever tool you have and I'm just gonna pop these little tacks out of the corner of that little um, picture there. So I'm just going to pry them up. Real quick, I wanna take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for choosing to stop by today. I really hope that you love what you see. And if you do, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. And I need to give a giant, giant thank you to every single one of you who have supported me. My channel finally reached 10,000 subscribers. And I think as of right now, we're actually over 10,600. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I, as promised, I am gonna be doing a giveaway. So stay tuned, because I'm gonna have more information on that in just a little bit. 
Okay, so after I pried all of those tacks up, I took this box that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I absolutely loved this box. I just love the colors. I love how it looks so rustic. So I just simply cut off one side of the box, and now I'm just kind of trimming it down because I only want like that wood around it to show. So like I said, I'm just going to trim it down and just make sure that I have only what I want seen. And look how perfect this fits on top of that cutting board. So it was a little rough around the edges, so now I'm just going to sand down the edges so they aren't so rough. And I'm just gonna go through, trim it up and sand until I have it looking how I want. So after I had it all sanded down, of course, I had to take my little ladybug and clean up my little mess. Don't forget, all of these little tools that I'm using, they are listed in my description box below if you'd like to pick yourself up one. I love that little tabletop vacuum. It comes in handy so much. Okay, so then I'm just going to simply hot glue my little front of the box to that sign, that cutting board, and look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, that just totally took it from Easter spring to fall and pumpkins and autumn, and I absolutely loved that. So now I'm just gonna take my tacks and I'm going to put them back in. Now typically, I would use my wire cutters to go ahead and actually cut off the tack part, the sharp part, and just hot glue these down, but I have no idea where my wire cutters are at the moment, <laughs> so I'm just doing my best just to go ahead and push them in. Now, I have big thumbs, <laughs> so I'm just using my strength and my big thumbs to push them in. Of course, you can hammer them in, but again, I don't have a hammer near me at this point, so I'm just doing the best I can. But I'm gonna go ahead and replace each one in every corner. Next, I decided I'm gonna make a bow. So I actually took the ribbon off of that box that I just used, so, cause I really liked that color, that kind of burnt orange color. So I'm just gonna cut that in half. And of course I cut the little uh, ends off. Then I'm just gonna use a variety of different ribbons. So I have this leaf ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm cutting off four um, uh, pieces of that. They are all the same size. And then I use this brown burlap ribbon and I'm going to cut off a piece of that and then cut it in half to make it a little skinnier. And then I'm also going to fray the edges by pulling uh, the string off of the sides. And I'm going to do that on both pieces. And then I'm actually going to go in with some thick thicker um, or wider, I should say, orange ribbon, and I'm going to cut that in half to make it a little bit um, uh, skinnier as well. And this has like wire around the edges, so I'm gonna have to cut that off as well. I'm sorry, my window's open, open and I think the trash guy or somebody's here, so that's why you probably hear beeping in the background, I'm sorry. So like I said, I just cut it, cut it off, cut it in half, and then I am cutting off the wire, that little shiny part right there. Then after that is cut down, it is time to go ahead and arrange my bow. I'm just gonna do a messy bow. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot I frayed the edges of these as well. So I'm just pulling the strings off along the sides. So after this, after that, then it's finally time to um, arrange my bow. And I'm just gonna do a messy bow or fat X bow as I call it. So I'm just gonna arrange all of my ribbons in a fat X just like that. And I'm just going to just kind of randomly place my ribbon down. Now, you've probably seen so many people do this type of ribbon and I am definitely not the best at it. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the best at making bows. So this is the easiest bow for me to do, however, so I just decided to do this. And then I topped it off with some raffia and I'm gonna take a zip tie and just zip tie it all together. That way it becomes one. So I'm gonna zip tie it right in the middle 
I had the hardest time trying to get my zip tie like under all of the ribbon for some reason. I don't know why. And this zip tie is black and it actually is a, is kind of a shorter one and it came in a pack from the Dollar Tree. And I love these little short ones for little things like this. That way you don't have to waste like a big one. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that through. And then what I ended up doing was I cut off another piece of that leaf ribbon and I actually covered the zip tie with that. So you'll see that I do go through and hot glue it over it. That way it, it hides the zip tie in the middle. So now I'm just kind of going through and I'm going to fluff my bow and then I'm going to cut down all of my um, tails. I'm just cutting them at an angle. I'm not going to do any like uh, a lot of people call them different things. Dog ear, ears, dovetails, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But I'm just cutting them all down at an angle and just so it's not so long. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I also cut down my raffia a little bit. Now, I did cut it down at this point, and then once I actually go to put it down on the cutting board, I realized it still was a little long. So you're going to see I have to kind of trim it down again, but just for now, this is what I, I did. So then what I'm going to do, like I said, was cut off a piece of that leaf uh, ribbon. I cut the rest of my zip tie off, and then I just simply hot glued that leaf ribbon around my zip tie to go ahead and hide it. Then I just kind of fluffed my bow, made sure my raffia was all fluffy and I had it looking how I wanted. So next I'm gonna take my cutting board and before I hot glue my bow down, I'm actually going to take some of these leaves that I also got from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hot glue some of those down underneath my bow. But now here's where I said that I had to go ahead and trim it down. I just kind of realized it wasn't really proportional to my cutting board so I had to trim it down just a little bit. Like I said, I feel like this is the easiest kind of bow to, for, my, for me to make personally because I'm not a good bow maker. <laughs> so, you know, you could definitely add any kind of bow or you don't have to add a bow at all, really. <laughs> okay, so once I got that all trimmed down, I'm just going to kind of play around with the leaves here and see which leaves I like best and where I want them placed. And then once I figure that out, I'm going to go ahead and hot glue them down. So I put one yellow leaf off to the side and then I'm gonna put kind of like that reddish orange. Uh, I was trying to actually mimic the same leaves that are in the graphic. Um, and if you, you know, if you really look, they're kind of the same color. So I think that's really cool. But right now I'm just going through and like I said, I'm just playing with placement here and deciding how I want this to look. Then once I decide, I was like, okay, you know what, it's probably just easier if I build, if I glue the bow down, that way I can go ahead and put the leaves underneath. So that's what I ended up doing. And now I'm gonna go ahead and finally decide how I want the leaves and glue those down as well. So as you can see, I kind of just placed my leaf and then I'm putting hot glue, that way it doesn't move. And then I'm gonna do the other side, I believe I added one to the other side as well, and then I, I know I added one on the top, and it was kind of a darker one. And I added that to give the sign some dimension and a little contrast there. So I'm just going to go through and hot glue all of my leaves down, kind of trim it up, make it look good. And here I go, I'm just adding that kind of deeper red to the top, just like that. Okay, then I decided that it needed something in the middle of the bow, so I'm just taking these really teeny pumpkins that I got from this pack of pine, cone and, pine cones and pumpkins, and I'm just gonna hot glue three of them right to the middle of my bow. I thought that this was the perfect little addition to this little cutting board, and I really loved the little pop of fun that it gave to it, but also made it look 3D. So like I said, I hot glued three of them 
in a bunch. And to add one more final touch to my cutting board, I took my Waverly Antique Wax and dabbed that on the tacks of this cutting board to kind of give it that rust look. And then unfortunately, I was having all kinds of issues with my camera during this video, so I'm sorry, but I did go through and I distressed the edges of my cutting board as well with the Waverly Antique Wax, but I don't believe I show it because my storage was running really low and I didn't realize but it stopped um, it stopped recording but I love how this cutting board transformed into fall but you tell me what do you think Okay, now it's time to talk about my 10K giveaway. First and foremost, I just wanna reiterate, I am so appreciative of all of my subscribers. Thank you so, so much for getting me to 10,000 plus <laughs> subscribers. To show my appreciation, I am going to gift three Dollar Tree calendars to one lucky winner. You're going to get the Farm Fresh calendar, the Thankful Grateful Blessed calendar, and the Farmhouse calendar. All you have to do is make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and comment below with which one of these DIYs in this video was your favorite. Then next Wednesday, September 29th, I will draw the winner and announce it in that day's video. So you're definitely going to want to tune in to see if you are the lucky winner. This next DIY is super simple too. So I took this little truck sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. Something might have been attached to it at some point. I think maybe some arrows that I had used and I had taken the arrows off, so now I'm just left with the truck. Then I'm gonna take these wooden words from the Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna give the Hello Fall um, little phrase a good coat of my Plaster Waverly chalk paint. After that was dry, I took some of my Waverly Antique Wax and a chunky brush, and I'm just gonna dry brush over it again to add that rustic look. If you don't like that look, you can skip it. You don't have to do it. You can do whatever you like, but I just wanted to add a little bit of texture and dimension onto my letters, so I just added the Waverly Antique Wax. Then after that, I'm gonna use some of my 3D tape and I'm just going to tape this on. That way it's kind of three dimensional and it pops from the truck. So I'm just going to peel it off and then put it on my words. And this one was perfect because there was like a lot of long letters like an L or the top of an H. So these had perfect places for the tape to go. And then I just went ahead and pushed it right down to the back of my truck and then I'm gonna take this stand that I actually had left over from another DIY and I had painted it white, but you can use any kind of like wood plank or whatever you have. And I hot glued the wheels down and then just to give it extra support, I went ahead and added one of those wooden blocks behind each wheel and that really helped to keep my truck upright. <laughs> and then I just went through and painted my little blocks white and that was it to the, that, that was it. That was all to this DIY. This was another one that I gave to my uh, cousin. I don't know if you can see off to the side, things kind of randomly moving. My younger cousin was actually here that day and she was helping me make some DIYs for her mom, for her house. So that was really fun that I got to share that experience with her and she had a lot of fun too, I think. But what do you think? For my next DIY, I 
saw this thankful metal word at the Dollar Tree and I remembered that I had seen something, I believe it was on the Kirkland website and I really wanted to give it a try. So the first thing I did was I painted this uh, word with some pumpkin orange apple barrel paint but then it just didn't give me the coverage I wanted. So I went ahead and just continued doing all, you know, just painting this whole thing. And then I dried it. And then I went in with my pumpkin orange Waverly chalk paint. And that really covered it much, much better. And that's the difference between chalk paint and acrylic. Chalk is just a little bit more, it was it's thicker. So the coverage is gonna be better. So you can see already how much of a difference it's making coverage wise. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that one coat of the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. And as you can see, I'm using a skewer to hold it down. That way I don't get, you know, paint all over my fingers. And then I'm simply going to set that to the side to dry. So next I'm gonna take this pumpkin wire form that I got from the Dollar Tree, and all I'm doing is just using some scrap leaves that I had in my stash, and I'm just kind of arranging them, kind of figuring out how I want them to go. Now, I, I'm not gonna lie to you, I almost scrapped this whole project like at the almost the very end of it. I, I just had a hard time trying to figure out how to put these leaves on and you know how to attach them because as you know metal and hot glue do not get along so I just went back and forth and then when it went to attach when I it came time to attach the word I had issues with that but I'm glad that I didn't it's definitely not perfect or flawless but I think it it, it came out you know good enough <laughs> I guess so right now I'm just kind of playing around with the leaves kind of seeing how I want to arrange it and so now I'm gonna just take some other different leaves and once I had like the base on, I went ahead and just hot glued more. Now originally I did use hot glue to put all of these down, but I knew darn well that it wasn't gonna stick and that I was gonna have to do something else. But this did help though placement wise. That way I can just kind of see and visual, have a visual of what I want it to look like. So I just did this until you know, I got I got the look I was going for and I just kept adding leaves. I would flip it upside down, add some hot glue to the back, and I also used some super glue as well, like that um that that super glue from the Dollar Tree to help it too. So I'm just going through adding leaves and then I actually found some uh, like a small piece of wire and I'm like, oh, perfect. I'm just going to use wire to go ahead and kind of and, and, and tie the stems down. So as you can see, that whole chunk fell off, but it all stayed to glued together. So that was good because now I just have to worry about, you know, um, tying or wrapping the wire around the the bottom part i hope this is all making sense to you <laughs> i mean i suppose i could have maybe hot glued a little bit of foam to the top and then just stuck it all in but i don't know i was trying to come up with the best way to do it and this is just what i found to work for me i did want to use that bow there so i kind of just kept sticking the bow in the middle just to see what it looked like see you know is this enough leaves do i need more leaves you can see those flowers up uh the right hand corner up, up top i was going to use those and then i didn't use those so i really went back and forth so now i decided that it just needed something else so i'm just hot gluing uh these little things i don't know what they're called but i i only had two of them so i'm going to do one kind of just you know flowing down on each side and for this I am using hot glue because I'm gonna glue this directly to the leaves already there so and and you know that worked out fine and then I did kind of tack the ends down on the wire and eh, one side stuck the other side didn't but I knew you know I knew it was I, I didn't know if it would stick I mean the chances weren't good metal does not you know mix with hot glue like I said so then I used these little I think they were called bittersweets. I think that was what was on the tag. I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> but I thought that these were so cute and so whimsical and wispy. So I decided to go ahead and add those to the side as well. And so that that's all I did. And it was, I just loved the look that that kind of added. I thought it was so cute and so pretty how it just kind of, you know, 
what's the word? Like kind of just sprayed out. That's the word I'm looking for. Just kind of sprayed out. So I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of keep adding until I get the fullness that I'm looking for. Now the Kirkland's piece had a lot of greenery, so that's why I'm using a lot of greenery in this. Now, like I said, I just kept testing it with the bow and just kind of placing it, seeing, you know, what, what I liked and kind of just playing around with it. Then once I decided that, okay, this looks really good, I want my bow to be attached, I just used the wire that was on the back of the bow and I went ahead and twisted it on. Now I did have to tack it down with some hot glue because it kept wanting to move up and down on the stem. So that's what I did. I just, you know, used some hot glue here and there, tacked it down, made sure that it wasn't going to move. And, ha and that way also, so it was placed where I wanted. Plus I really wanted you to be able to see the stem as well. So then I just felt like it really needed something. So I got these burlap flower or <laughs> leaves from the Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna add those to the side. And I really do think that those leaves alone brought this whole thing together. Now they have wire on the back, so I just simply twisted it. I didn't use any glue or anything. So I put one on one side and one on the other. I'm trying to make it match on both sides, but I have more leaves on one side than the other, so it doesn't look the exact same, but I got it to look how, how I wanted, and I thought that it came out cute. And then like I said, I just kind of tacked those little yellow things down just so they wouldn't really move and flop around, but also there was a look I was going for and that I that I, I wanted them to stay where they were. Then I just went through and added more greenery uh, to some like bare spots or some spots that I thought was missing, uh, some leaves. And now it's time to add my word. So as you saw, I don't know, well, I don't know if you saw, but there were like little loops already attached. So all I did was use those black little zip ties and zip tie my word to this pumpkin frame. However, <laughs> this is not in the middle because those little loops don't hit on top of a wire that would be in the middle. And I did not realize it until after the fact, until after I had this on. So when you see the pictures, you are going to notice that this word's not in the middle, but that's okay. I'm going to try to look past it. But other than that, I think that this actually did come out really cute. But let me know down in the comments. What do you think? last DIY has got to be my absolute favorite. I really wanted to make something for my grandma. Uh, she loves it when I DIY her some stuff. In fact, we took a trip to the Dollar Tree together and she wanted to buy my stuff because she said that I always make her stuff. Of course, I did not let her that time. But <laughs> so what I'm going to start off with is this little box sign that I, of course I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just giving it one good coat of Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm making sure to get the sides, the edges, just the entire thing. Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to remind you, if you love what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow, but also it tells YouTube you love my content and want to see more. So smash that like button. Okay, next up, I'm going to take this little pumpkin sign from the Dollar Tree, and you saw how easy it was for me to get that stand off. I just kind of wiggled it back and forth. Now I'm going to pop that little pumpkin off and the raffia bow, but keep the raffia bow near because we will be using it and then by using my hair dryer and my scraper I'm gonna go ahead and take that uh, sticker label off of there and that's just the best way I, I found to get these stupid stickers off is just by heating it up and then scraping it Then I just used my sanding block to sand the back down just to get the glue residue off. And then I just went in with my pumpkin orange apple barrel paint and I'm just going to give this entire thing besides the stem, not the stem, a coat of that. And I did make sure to get the edges and on the top and the bottom and all the way around. I did have to do a few coats. 
Then I took this other pumpkin, and this one is a little taller pumpkin, and I purposely wanted two different ones, kind of a shorter one and a taller one, and I'm gonna explain why in just a minute. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I popped all the 3D stuff off the front, including the raffia bow. I'm gonna use my hair dryer to heat up the little sticker label, scrape it off, sand it down, and then I'm going to paint this as well in the pumpkin, I believe this, yeah, this is the apple barrel pumpkin orange paint. And again, I'm giving each of these a few coats. Now, as those were drying, I went through and I took my hazelnut, I'm sorry, nutmeg, <laughs> hazelnut, my nutmeg apple barrel paint, and I'm just brushing it over, and look, that looks like wood. I don't know how I did that, but all I did was use the nutmeg paint and just brushed it with a foam brush, but that really is giving the illusion of wood, and I really loved what that looked like. So again, I'm just gonna go through all the edges, the sides, and I really loved the way that that came out. I thought that was so cute that I, of course I kept dropping it. <laughs> so I'm just uh, brushing that on. And then after that dries, I'm gonna go back with my Waverly Antique Wax and a small little paintbrush, and I'm just gonna highlight it and add some little wood, darker wood marks on there. And I really thought that that brought this whole look together and even more so made it look like wood. I did not intend for that to happen. I was honestly just going to paint it a solid brown, but then once I started getting that look, I was like, ooh, I kind of like where this is going. So then I just decided to just go with it. So I did the front, I'm doing the sides, the edges. So I'm just making sure to add that Waverly wax all over my little board. So after that, I took that same little brush and my wax, and I'm just gonna add some highlighting details to my pumpkins. So I just started at the bottom, and I'm just gonna add those pumpkin lines, like those curved pumpkin lines, and then I'm just going to outline my pumpkins in uh, the perimeter of my pumpkins with that too. And I really love adding these um, these highlighting lines to pumpkins. I mean, if you've been watching my DIYs, you know that I do this on all pumpkins. So, but I just think that this makes it look so realistic and, you know, gives it that rounded effect. So I went ahead and did the first one and then I moved to the second one and I'm just adding some highlights and some detail. This is so easy to do and this little touch just adds so much. So now I'm gonna go around the edges again, just around the perimeter. And you can see that I'm kind of using my finger too to um, kind of smear or kind of like blend it. And that way it's not so harsh, but I really loved how this highlighting came out. And then I'm just gonna kind of just dry brush some brown paint at the bottom and then kind of in between those little rounded space, spaces too. Okay, so next I'm gonna use my Christmas green paint and I'm gonna paint the stems of each one of my pumpkins. And at the bottom where the stem meets the actual pumpkin, I'm making sure to kind of make it messy there so it kind of just looks like it all flows and blends. And I am making sure to get the edges of my stem as well. So I'm getting the sides and the top. Now I'm not gonna worry about covering the back of this. This is gonna be for my grandma, but it's okay. <laughs> I don't think she's gonna care. I mean, I might go back and do it before I give it to her, I'm not sure. I can't wait to give this to her. She's, ugh, she's gonna love it. So I'm just gonna finish up my other stem. Make sure that it's fully covered. And then I took my Cricut and I cut out the word R, or, or the phrase, our little pumpkins. If you don't have a Cricut, you can also, always use stencils, rub on transfers, you can handwrite it, you can use stickers. There's so many other options if you don't have a cutting machine. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up and I made sure that it was even on both sides. And then once I had it down where I wanted it, I pushed it on and then I'm going to peel off the transfer tape and oh my gosh, I can't wait till you see this, it's so cute. 
So I'm just peeling it back. And look how cute our little pumpkins. I saw this idea on Pinterest. I think it came like originally from Personalization Mall or Personal Creations, one of those um, sites. But I just, uh, I saw it and I'm like, I gotta try this. Okay, so then I also cut out the names of my daughter and then her little cousin, Giovanni. So I'm making this for my grandma, but these are their great-grandchildren. So, and they only have two right now, so I thought that my grandma would love this. And my grandpa. <laughs> I think my grandpa would like it too. So I'm putting Amelia on the taller one since she is older. And then Giovanni's just one, so I'm putting him, his on like the shorter one. And I thought it was so cute. There we go. And now we're going to put it all together. So to put this on my board, um, oh, I forgot. I did add moss to my board. However, I would definitely skip this step. Just wait until you glue your pumpkins down because you're gonna have to, you're gonna see that I had to take some moss off in order to get the pumpkins to glue down. So, and I should have known better. That was a dumb mistake. I don't know what I was thinking. But I did go ahead and hot glue some moss to the top. Now you can see that I put the Our Little Pumpkins on the wider side of the box. And now this is this kind of skinnier side. So that's going to be the top of my box. So I'm just adding some uh, moss there. And then I'm going to give it a little haircut and I'm going to trim it so, you know, it just kind of looks a little cleaner. I know moss really isn't clean, but I'm just kind of getting rid of the crazy pieces along all the sides there we go it's kind of messy <laughs> and then to adhere my pumpkins down I'm actually going to use some tumbling tower blocks so <laughs> at first I hot glued the tumbling tower block directly to the pumpkin and then just thought I was going to glue, you know, that down to the box. But you're going to see that I actually had to do it a little differently. So now I'm just kind of figuring out where, how I want this to set. And I do want the Giovanni pumpkin to kind of rest over or overlap the Amelia pumpkin. So that's how I'm going to arrange it. And now, like I said, at first I put on the tumbling tower block directly to the pumpkin. And I'm making sure that it is flush to the bottom so that way it stands up straight. And then this is where I realize I'm going to have to get rid of some of that moss. So I attempt it <laughs> and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. I'm holding it. It's going to fall. It doesn't work. So I thought, oh, okay, well, that was dumb. So now I got to take some off. So easy fix. All you have to do is just kind of just cut it with your scissors. I took a knife at one point and just kind of scraped it off. I just created a space for my uh, tumbling tower to be glued down directly to the box. So then I attempted it again. And now you can see that it's it's not standing at all. So what I decided to act, to do is to take the pumpkin off the tumbling tower block and just have the tumbling tower block directly glued to the top of the box, but I did have to remove more of the moss. So I'm showing you this because I want you to see that we make mistakes too and how we fix them or if you do something like this, how you can fix it. So there's always a solution to everything in crafting and nothing, you know, mistakes can be fixed. I mean, it's just crafting. <laughs> so I just kind of shaved it down a little bit, cut it off, and now I created a space for that tumbling tower to block to go. And now, like I said, I'm just going to directly hot glue that block onto the, um, the sign, and then I'm going to hot glue the pumpkin onto the block. Now, I do add a second block on top to give it um, even more support, but there's a separation in the middle because I flipped it over and now there's dried hot glue because that was the original, it, that was the original block, it, like it, it was glued down. I don't know if this is making sense. I hope it is. Anyways, 
Then I just held it down and finally it is standing up on its own. So then I just added a little bit of hot glue in the front of that pumpkin to, um, to make sure that it doesn't fall forward right there. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'm just gonna create a space for my block to go. And then this, I just went ahead and hot glued down just like that. And then I did hot glue the two pumpkins together where they overlap. And that helped keep the Amelia pumpkin upright as well. So then because I had to get rid of some moss, I just went through and I hot glued, uh, I hot glued some moss back in front of it and around it and behind it and just kind of finished it off. Okay, so then I just decided I wanted to add some um, accessories before I glue down the bow. So I'm simply just gonna add a leaf to each one of the stems of the pumpkin and then add back the raffia bow. <laughs> now originally, okay, I'm gonna full disclosure, I'm gonna be honest, I threw these raffia bows out when I popped them off originally. And so yes, I had to dig through the trash to get them back, but that's okay. <laughs> I got them obviously <laughs> and they're fine. <laughs> I mean, what's in the trash? Paper, vinyl, <laughs> not a lot of gross stuff. Paint brushes. So now I'm just kind of fixing up my bow and now I decided I was gonna add pine cones. Now I do have to say this is when my camera shut off and I didn't realize it. After I added pine cones, I did go through and add little mini um, sunflowers all around, which you'll see here in just a second in the pictures. But I absolutely love this one. I think it's gotta be my favorite and I can't wait to give it to my grandparents from their little great grandkids. What do you think? Loving all of these DIYs today. We had a good mix of the traditional DIYs that you'll see right here, these three, and of course you're not going to see the other two right now because I already gave them to my cousin when we decorated her house for fall, but I just, I loved how all of these came out. Like I said earlier, that little Our Little Pumpkin sign is probably my favorite, and I might be a little biased because of course it has something to do with my daughter, but <laughs> I really do think that it is a adorable. You're going to have to let me know in the comments which one was your favorite out of today's DIYs. And don't forget, if you do comment with that, then you are entered in my giveaway. But don't forget, you have to also be a subscriber and like this video. So don't forget to do those three things so you can be entered in to win the pack of three calendars from the Dollar Tree. Though you know those calendars are so, so popular and they are great for making some amazing DIYs all year round. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you had a, that you got a lot of inspiration and ideas on some fun DIYs that you can make for your home for this autumn season. This is probably going to be one of my last fall DIY videos because I'm going to continue with Halloween after this and then you know what comes up after that. <laughs> so please, if you have not done so already, don't forget to subscribe so you can see and check Check out all of that upcoming content and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload all of those DIYs. Thank you again for joining me today and for getting me to over 10,000 subscribers. I love each and every one of you. Well, until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!